Today is a really important day. We're sending three black rhino, two females and a male, to Mokomozi Game Reserve in Tanzania. The idea that we should just breed these animals and keep them in zoos or wildlife parks for the rest of their lives makes no sense to me at all. In the last 35 years, there have been 100 black rhino born in European zoos, of which 33 have been born here. We've already returned five rhinos back to the wild. A lot of planning goes into it and a lot of people are involved. The relationship they have with their keepers during this process is absolutely vital. We fed her and made her feel relaxed in the crate. And then Pete put the needle in and that's when she came flying out. So she got quite a startle. It sort of showed really the importance of the crate training because you know if she got a little bit of a shock we always encouraged her to come back in and once she sort of came back in and relaxed then Pete was able to slip back in. And then they were able to shut the door so it was perfect. Really relieved to have her in the crate and she's sort of like not damaged herself in any way and she's pretty calm and yeah it's fab. I don't think there's a single dent in those crates which is fantastic. The start we wanted to get off on really. There are always risks involved. We have to make sure they don't get too stressed. We have to protect them from poachers. We have to protect the rhino from poisoning. But all of these things we'll manage and we're very, very hopeful that they will successfully be reintroduced back into the wild. To breed these animals in captivity, the end game has to be to return them home. It's amazing how this time yesterday the rhino at Fort Lim in England and now they're about to arrive back in Tanzania where they belong. Coming in now, they got delayed at a big, um, huge crossing, river crossing. Here they come. Good. Good. Rhinos have been a protected species for a number of years. However, since the turn of the century, 95% of the rhino population has been slaughtered. Unless we do things like this, then there's, there's no hope for them as a species. I'll be with them until they're released into the big area and also Claire's going to be here working with them and Kira's going to be coming out as well so the keepers that have been with them for years at Fort Lynn, that's really important. And we're, we're as keen as anyone to just get them out there and get them settled but really you can't put them under any pressure. You start trying to pressurise a rhino and you're going to cause problems. And that foot touches Tanzanian soil, you think, this is why we're in it, this is why we do what we do. And you just think, you know, this is the whole point and purpose of what one's been trying to do. These animals have been brought up in Kent in wonderful conditions, but it just makes perfect sense. I've never seen it go like that before. It's pretty smooth, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Hello. It's called the Raspinal yes. Foundation right there. <laughs> we haven't successfully protected these animals, and the slaughter of these animals is worse than it's ever been, which is why it's so important now to, to bring them back to little havens like this, where they are safe. They haven't lost a rhino to poaching where we are now because it's heavily protected. And um, unless we do things like this, then there's, there's no hope for them as a species. It's run by a, a, an amazing man called Tony Fitzjohn, who is part of the George Adamson Foundation. He protects a million acres of land. He's never lost a rhino, 
and uh, it's a fabulous project and it's a very safe place for us to send the rhino. During the early weeks, the keepers will stay with them and be with them every day. She got quite demanding about her food on the plane. She, she was calling. Squeaking for it. <laughs> she was <laughs> And that whole process will de-stress them, and that's a very, very important part of the release program. That'll be the last time she has Portland mud on her. Uh, yes. The team have been amazing. It's a big thing. This is the first stage, getting them settled, making sure they're eating plenty of the new brows, keeping their normal zoo diet going. Um, and then next, next thing will be to get them outside, which will be lovely because they'll be able to wallow, browse naturally for themselves. The Czech ones who arrived three years ago have already produced a calf between you know, the adult pair. The potential here is to have a really fantastic breeding group of rhinos that can assist the wild population and ultimately join them at some stage in the future is, is fantastic. If you think where we are now, rhino had been hunted to extinction. So a few years ago there were no rhino, and now there's 17 rhino. And uh, you know, I think in 10 years there'll be 30 or 40 rhino. So the significance is, is substantial. <laughs>